its real name is really rather long. I've got all day. <laughs> Shall I get it on the screen so we can read it out? Because there's a ChemDraw picture of it, mm -hmm. and I could read it out. And its uh, formal name is bis bis n trimethyl sil aluminio diphenyl phosphorono methanide uranium iodo toluene diide. So that is this compound right here. So my colleague Steve Little, the uranium man, has just published a paper and he's made a new compound with two uranium atoms in it. Quite complicated. But it has one interesting property and I want to tell you about that. This one is the, the main subject of the paper which we've just published. It's a really, really intense dark blue colour. It's so blue that you actually when you look at it you think it's black. To begin with, you have to think about the hard disk in your computer or if you've got an old-fashioned iPod inside there as well, which uses magnetic material to record the noughts and ones that make up digital signals for your music or your computer programs or whatever. And it does this by having small regions that are magnetic. And they behave just like a little magnet with a north and a south pole. And they can point one way for a naught and the other way for a one. And the smaller you can make this region, the more information you can get on a hard disk. And over the years, material scientists and chemists have managed to make materials that get smaller and smaller magnetic areas that can still be read. This is what we would call a single molecule magnet. And what this single molecule magnet uh, title means is that it has a type of magnetism which is held preferentially uh, at a particular temperature and it will hold that magnetism. But if it gets too warm then it scrambles and it loses its preference. A few years ago people came up with something they called single molecule magnets which contained a relatively small number of atom, metal atoms which were lined up and once these atoms had been magnetized if they were at low temperature they could keep their magnetization. It was very cold, only a few degrees above um, absolute zero but enough to demonstrate the effect. So if you can get individual molecules to store your individual zeros and ones, you've increased the level of data storage many hundreds of times, probably thousands of times. The problem is finding a single molecule magnet that keeps its magnetization really well. And the transition metals, iron, particularly manganese, are very good with one property, but they have a different property which is not so good for getting the effect. On the other hand, the lanthanide elements, the rare earths, have the second property very good, the first one isn't so good. And it looks as if the uranium group, the actinides, has the two properties together, both reasonably good. Neither's brilliant, but the combination is better than either the transition metals or the rare earths. So it could actually be one of the best elements available to do this. And Steve has now demonstrated the principle that you can get uranium atoms which will couple together in the way that you need for a single molecule magnet. The effect is really quite striking. The problem is that it only occurs at a really low temperature. So the temperature that it works at is below two degrees absolute, which is absolutely hopeless if you wanted to make a hard disk. But it's a first step. Are you suggesting that we could have hard drives <coughs> containing uranium in the future? I'm saying in the future it might be possible. Whether anybody actually wants a hard drive with depleted uranium in it is an entirely separate issue. But from a a does it work yes or no perspective, the answer is in the future, yes, it might be able to work. I think it's pretty unlikely 
that you will have uranium in computers. But what I do think is that compounds like this, again, make chemists think. And suddenly they'll realize, well, we could do something quite clever and get round the fact that we don't need to use uranium. So this is our molecule here. And you can see a uranium there and a uranium center there. And then we've got these quite big, complicated ligands. But basically, the uranium is bonded to one carbon and two nitrogens. And then it has an iodide. And then we've got this bridging toluene molecule. And then on this side, it's exactly the same as that side. What's a, that's a monster molecule. That is a, a monster molecule indeed.